Welcome to Toy House Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. I'm going to do another Kendall letter demonstration. Been having fun with some creative typography. It is probably the smallest collection on my website, so I wanted to add some more and then I'm going to move on to something else. I have a lot of ideas of what I want to do today, but I'm basically just going to be reacting to the paint, the textures, what happens. These are all very creative and very experimental. And I'm not going to probably plan the colors either. I'm just going to have some fun. One thing I did want to plan that I'm probably going to stick to is I'm going to work with not re not so much bleeding through here, some, but not so much of the bleeding of the paint through here in the letter D. And in the background, I'm going to get that whole area wet and just really let it bleed and see if I can get a real interesting contrast that way. Art. Uh, contrast is, of course, a very important part of art. Anybody that studies any kind of art knows that. And I just want to try to really get something different between the letter, which we can call the foreground, which it really isn't, and the background. Let's see what happens. And I'm going to just react to the colors. I'm not going to do any warm and cool separation. I've been doing that a lot, but not this time. I'm just going to see what happens and not worry about whether the paint in the letter is thin or thick. I'm just going to let it go. I might even use some of it just right out of the jar. As I said before, these are inexpensive acrylic paints that I use in pretty much a watercolor technique. And that's the reason I don't have them for sale because I as I said before, I believe in quality, so I do not sell something that I think is going to get bad. But when I say I'm using a watercolor way, you can use acrylics like oils, which is my main medium. You can build them up and they can look very much like an oil painting. In fact, I had a student that was really, really good at that. When he went to the framer, they were really amazed they thought it was an oil painting. You can just mimic that with oils. I mean, with acrylics, you can mimic. You can mimic an oil painting with acrylics. But um, I've never, never really liked using acrylics as oil. And when I told, when I explained to him why, he thought, "Well, that sounds really weird." And he never thought about it. And uh, probably not everyone that uses acrylics would react this way too. But because it's a polymer-based medium, plastic. To me, it just never gets away <laughs> from that look of plastic when you use it like an oil paint. It just always, to me, makes me think of a latex glove. <laughs> That's just me. And there's just nothing like the beauty of oil paints. And I don't mind waiting for the drying time and everything. That's all part of the process. And it, it's just gorgeous. And I'm so pleased with the one I'm working on, which is unusual. Because I've said before, artists say they always go through this process of, oh, it's fun. Oh, God, now it's agony. Oh, now I want to get the thing done. That hasn't happened this time, which is really, really strange. Because usually I do go through that process and I go through what I call arm wrestling or art wrestling. <laughs> when you go back and forth, you make decisions and, you know, ah. Oh. And as I said before, it doesn't matter whether you're doing actual something or an abstract. It's still a lot of decision making as things happen while you're painting. And I, I really think that's just extremely hard to understand unless you paint. So any painters out there, I know you know what I'm talking about. You get into all this stuff where it's um like tote. I had a teacher that called it tote. Test, you try something, operate, and exit. <laughs> and it doesn't always come out the way you want it to, especially if you're doing abstract, because then you're not basing it on anything but a reaction to what to colors and textures and to design elements to try to come up with something that just is a really great visual experience. And as I've explained to people before, it's um we all have these biases, um, things we like to see, things we don't like to see. Like some people are really into cars. I have a friend on Facebook who is just that he just lives for cars and that's what his blog is always about. Well, I'm not really that interested in cars. I never have been, and it's kind of weird because most people are. So a painting of a car wouldn't be as interesting to me as one to him. And 
some people are really into dancers and some people could, could care less. It's uh, you know, we're all in our personality. But when an artist doesn't have any recognizable subject matter, then you either like it or you don't because just the way it looks. And that's what abstract art is all about. And you don't have to like it. You don't have to like any of it. But that's the whole point, that you are really reacting to it the same way you react to music that you like that doesn't have any words. Now, I like what I've done so far, except for one area. I don't like the way that's just getting kind of muddy. So I'll probably be going back into it. And I'm not real happy about the use of the purple, which I only use like one time. And I don't really like the way that came out. But uh, that's the great thing about paint. You can go back into it. Now, because a lot of this is bled together, it might be a little tricky to change it. But um, for the most part, I think it's working okay. Uh, now it's not bleeding anymore, but I said I wasn't going to worry about that, so I'm going to quit saying that. <laughs> I can certainly just get some white into this blue, and then it'll stick out better. And get some really, really light blue-green. Oh, didn't get very light. I think that would help. I think that it's gotten a little bit, um, to my way of thinking, a little bit on the noxious looking side. But uh, that's all on a personality thing more than what's here. And I just think the reds aren't working that good. I don't know. Probably should go ahead and do the background because like I've said, ad nauseum. <laughs> White is the combination of all colors, so it overpowers any systems that you have. And that, um, it's not true for everybody. I think a lot of people like to see a, a white background. But it, uh, to me, it's really hard to see color interactions when you've got all that white, which is all the colors together. And like I said, if you don't believe me, take all equal amounts of all colors, spin them together, and you're going to get white. Maybe an off-white, but it will be white. All right, I'm going to go ahead now and get the rest of it wet. Now, this is tricky. This is a watercolor technique. It's called wet and wet, and it's tricky because you got to get just the right amount or it's not going to work at all, and it could dry on you. And it's going into my D, which is okay. I figured that would happen, and I'm, I, I thought that would be kind of actually a good thing because um, get some dripping going. I think I got it all. And now let's see if I can get it to bleed though. You never know. It takes a lot of practice and I'm not a watercolor artist so for me it's a little trickier than maybe for somebody that's always working in watercolors. Let's see what I can get going here. Got to have really wet paint. Yeah, it's not bleeding very much. But it is bleeding. Not bleeding very much at all. It must be a really, really dry day. The paper is just drying right up, so I'm going to put some more water on there. See if I can get it going a little better. I don't want to go too long. I think I've only gone about 10 minutes, which is good. Alright, now let's see if we can do a little better with this. It's the amount of water on the paper, but also the amount in the brush. Okay, that's working better. See how it's moving around and into the paper. And the interesting thing about this technique, as I explained to students when I made them do it, so I appreciate art more, is that it's going to keep changing. You think it's looking a certain way, but it's just going to keep on bleeding, keep on moving into the paint until the paper is completely dry. Yeah, not doing real good with the wet and wet today. But doing the best I can. It's really hard to do this in front of people. In front of people. Well, <laughs> on YouTube, because even though there's nobody here, it still makes me nervous. Okay, and that's working a little better. Uh, I like the way now I'm starting to get into the colors in the D. So that's great. And I don't want to lose the pattern that I've got because I did want it to, to keep this really strong pattern in the background. Okay, I'm just kind of making it bleed now. 
by putting a lot of pain into it. Look at that horse today. There we go. Let's see it's spreading around. Okay, that's making the to me the D look a heck of a lot better. Maybe not to you, but to me, absolutely much better, much more interesting to look at. And I am gonna add still some more water. It's really must be a very, very dry day. And it's real cheap paper too, which dries faster. If you have high rag content paper, it stays wet for quite a long time. All right, I'm not gonna do a whole lot more. Can always do some off camera, make some decisions and all. But it's starting to look pretty nice to me now. It's not bad. Okay, see if I can get a little more of the bleeding going. Get the right amount of water into my paint here. Yep, there we go. Again, just do some bleeding and dripping together. I'm getting a little frustrated here. <laughs> it's not bleeding the way I know I can get it, but I want to get done. Busy day, lots to do, always. So I want to just kind of bleed the colors into each other and not just work with the. Okay, now I like that. I like having it dark on one side, making it more of a design. Yeah, I like that a lot. So, I'll use a little more paint the way that's working. And it's bleeding some there. Yeah, I do like that. Now, I wasn't planning on that so much, but it's like almost like a, a light effect coming in on this this creative design. As always told students, all design is art, all art is design. It doesn't matter if it looks just like that apple, <laughs> or, or if it's sort of like that apple, or if it's very abstract, it's still a design of that. Now I'm starting to like it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get some more yellow on the right side. So it can start to kind of look like a, a light effect coming in. And some in the D, too. The last one I did, no, the one before that, that happened, and I wasn't really trying to get that to happen. And when I uploaded, I thought, wow, it's kind of like almost three-dimensional on one side, uh, the letter A, so be sure to check that one out. And I really like the way that happens. So if that happens again here, I'm kind of making it happen, I think that'll be nice. That it's got kind of a, a look, uh, more of a, of a shape to the D. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm starting to, to really like this. That's always great because I never know. As I said, these YouTube ones are so experimental, but I still want them to be good. No matter what. And I'm, yeah. But I'm starting to really like that. I wonder if I should, I'm afraid to put too much more in here because see it's bled very nicely and that's not gonna happen now. It's gonna just start to separate out into flat areas of color. So, I don't know if I want to do that. I might just decide on that afterwards. But I really, really like the way this turned out. So, it, this may be it. I may emphasize certain things. Just kind of picking through it a little bit. Which is the sort of thing that takes a lot of time. That's why I don't want to spend a whole lot of time here. Now, see, that, and it's going to get into what we call the flat wash. It's going to stop moving around and I really don't want that. If you ever study watercolors, you know what I'm talking about. Flat wash, dry brush, wet and wet. There's a whole lot more, but those are the main techniques. And I use acrylics instead of watercolors because I just think the colors are so much nicer and so much stronger. And you can just thin acrylics way down and it's a watercolor. When I upload some of these in the category for groups, it says watercolor, water media. Yeah, that's exactly what this is, even though it's an acrylic painting. Okay, I think I'm going to stop right there, and it's going to just keep, like I said, it's going to keep moving. You think it's not, but it's going to keep moving around these areas that are bleeding until the paper finally dries. So thank you for watching. Be sure to click on the link to the final painting, and then there are links to my website, to my work on Etsy, and others.